All right, hello, wine-drinking people. Time for more of what I've had to drink yesterday in a busy month here in February uh, of drinking we've had. And, you know, Alex Gamble, one of our good friends from Burgundy, usually comes into town this time of year. I don't know what happened to Alex. Uh, actually, I do. I talk to Alex on a regular basis via email, and he came into town a couple weeks early for this event in Naples and decided not to hang around for South Beach this year, but... That's why we have this event on the calendar, because if he's here, he's with us on Saturday night to preview the new releases, and Alex has been in Burgundy since the early 90s. He went to work for Becky Wasserman, fell in love with it, moved his wife, his family, his kids there, and, and started at the University of Bone to take winemaking lessons to start his own negotiant firm, and I have to say his wines just continue to get better and better, and Alex a very smart guy. He's also the first American to own Grand Cru Vineyards in Burgundy, a real coup when you look at these vineyards when they sell it's an arm's length transaction. You never have an opportunity to bid on these vineyards. And, uh, well, Alex had a cold consortium of people. You are wine drinking people. Could have been owners. Uh, we had a little uh, uh, deal together for anyone that wanted to get in with Alex on this Bienvenue Batard Mont Rocher vineyard. But um, it's a generational investment, man. It's one of those things when you look at the price tag of Land and Burgundy, you cannot justify spending the money unless you want to go there and hang out and be part of the crowd. But, uh, you know, we can go there and hang out anyways. Anyways, the 2000 2010 vintage was the subject of study on this evening and you know I've done more Burgundy tastings where people come to them these young wines from Burgundy in a great vintage like 2010 can be very hard to wrap your arms around when they're really young so you know the 2010 reds I should have opened the night before because they really were not very expressive and I didn't experiment with this Alex just like I asked you and unfortunately I was up in New York the night before so I forgot to tell my guys to open the Reds up the night before the tasting, but they still, I think, showed uh, one of the things that's characteristic of great young Burgundy. You know, they had that concentration, they had that, um, they had tannins, they had acid, everything is in perfect balance, just not really showy at the moment. We started out with the Bourgogne Chardonnay, and this comes from their own parcel in Volnay, all biodynamically produced, like so many great producers today. And then uh, the Bourgogne says got a wonderful balance of acidity and richness of Polini and Volnay, the two vintages where those grapes come from, those two villages rather. And they vinified this in 15% new wood, only 750 cases produced, kind of a nice smoky flinty note on the nose, a green apple and lemon drop candy fruit showing a little limestone and kind of a nutty quality to this wine as well nice intensity of fruit on the palate with lovely rich ripe fruit that apple and lemon drop candy stuff showing uh, on the finish with a nice zesty approach and a little bit of toasty oak spice showing through there as well and the minerality uh, really nice complexity for a Bourgogne Blanc very good juice and we've got a good amount of this at the moment the Saint Aubin Dental Champ Premier Crew maybe would just show this after the Chasson Mont Rocher this is a village just south into the west of Chasson and uh, this this is always a great wine, a really nice amount of uh, fruit and minerality coming out in this wine. 20% new oak, only 300 cases produced. Lightly toasted oak spice on the nose, some green apple and kind of white peach fruit, that flinty minerally note showing this wine as well. Very rich wine on the palate, the texture of whole milk, and a nice amount of that toasty oak spice showing on the finish, but lovely balance and freshness. A really healthy dose of minerality here as well. Excellent juice, the best value of all of Alex's whites this year, that Delta Shen. All right, the Chasson Montrachet. And uh, this is a, a wine that always is very showy on release. That's why we love Chasson. It doesn't take the time that Polini takes to come around. This comes from two parcels of 65 to 35 year old vines below Creo and uh, Champ Gain. And 20% uh, new oak in this. Only 175 cases produced of this wine. Really lovely ripe peach and lemon drop candy fruit on the nose with highlights of lightly toasted oak. Even lighter than the Bourgogne Rouge or the Dante Chen. Really elegant wine on the nose. Uh, very fresh and bright on the palate with a nice touch of that toasty oak spice. Lemony citrus uh, zest on the finish. Uh, really rich. It has wonderful balance in this wine as well. Um, lovely tongue tingly minerality. Excellent juice. The Chasson Mont Rocher 2010. All right, the 2010 Corton Charlemagne, the big boy. And uh, this wine, uh, really nice complexity here, although, you know, it's still a little shy on the nose. Um, this is uh, only 75 cases made, two thirds new oak. So you notice a little bit of that toasty oak spice on the nose. Lovely fresh green apple, lemon blossom, strong mineral overtones, a hint of cinnamon spice to this on the nose as well. Really nice complexity here after this wine had a chance to sit in the glass for a while. A little tightly wound though on the tongue. Lovely, smooth, and elegant wine with a long finish. But you can tell this wine just needs some time, has some excellent length. But um, everything in place, just not really showy and open at the moment. Most 
excellent juice though. I'd like to have this wine 10 years from now. Moving on to the Reds, the 2010 Bourgogne Pinot Noir Cuvée Due Papi. Uh, this is a really amazing little wine. I'll tell you the most showy of all the wines. Some people said they like this wine the best of the Reds and obviously not the best red on the table. You know, we had some Grand Cru stuff, Clos Bougeau. But 20% new oak used in this wine and 350 cases. Wow, pretty red cherry fruit, cranberry fruit on the nose, hints of rose petals, spice, and fresh earth. A really bright and fresh wine on the palate with that uh, floral note and that spice coming through on the finish. Nice complexity for a Bourgogne Rouge, but even this wine needs a little time. Probably going to be better a year from today. The 2010 Savigny Le Bon Vie Vigne. Savigny is a village you can get incredible value from, and these wines are very long lived. I've had some 69 vintage Savigny Le Bons that are still drinking beautifully. It's my birth year. I'll have some again this weekend. All right. So, well, uh, unfortunately, only 125 cases of this wine made. 20% new oak, light red berry fruit, exotic spices, a gravelly, minerally kind of note to this. Some floral notes as well, but a lot of red berry fruit here. A solid core of that fruit showing on the tongue with smooth and silky tannins. Has some tannin on the finish here. Really lovely balance, though, and lovely freshness in these wines. These 2010s, very well built. This wine's going to be around 10 maybe 20 years from now, maybe 30, 40, I'm 44. 69s are still around. I can't believe it. The 2010 Von Ramene, one of my favorite villages in all of Burgundy. This wine has some volume. Not to say it's bulky, but it's a lovely mouthfeel, lovely raciness. Only 125 cases of this wine made. A third new oak. Really pretty bouquet. Exotic spices, fresh floral notes, raspberry, strawberry-like fruit with some earthy notes showing, but this wine's got lovely structure on the palate. Likes firm acidity and an array of spice and nuance through the finish. Very precise and long. Excellent juice the 2010 Von Ramene. 2010 Clos Vougeau. Uh, this is uh, the largest Grand Cru in all of Burgundy. You can have a big difference in the Clos Vougeau from the top of the hill to the bottom. Alex's piece is up near the top and uh, lovely silkiness to this wine. 120 12 cases made, 55% new oak, the most oak of any wine that Alex has got on the table on this evening. A meaty, kind of smoky nuance of the dark cherry fruit. Lovely complexity as this wine started to open up. It took a little while to, to coax the wine out of the glass. We had to give it several swirls. We had to you know, really uh, work on this one a little bit. It, like I said, it would have been better the next day. Unfortunately, there's nothing left in any of these bottles. We did proceed to drink everything on the table. That meaty nuance showing to that red cherry fruit on the nose, some black cherry, black raspberry fruit, a little darker than the other wines, and a lovely spice and nuance of this wine, pretty floral notes all the way to the finish. Most excellent juice. This wine just needs a decade in your cellar. These 2010s are really going to reward you if you sit on them. 2006 Clos Vougeau was a little extra added treat. You know, you always get extra here at the Wine Watch when you come in for a tasting. We wanted to show you it. Older example, 2006, a vintage that's very showy right now. This wine had a lovely amount of dark spice, black truffle notes to the nose, black raspberry fruit, dark spices again, and truffly notes, menthol even a little bit. Really light on the palate and showing really nice evolution here. That spice and kind of black truffle note showing on the finish. This wine still has got great balance, so it could last another 20 years, but really starting to show its stuff at this point. And hey, we opened up a 2005 Bourgogne Chardonnay also. The lights were a little white once the food came out, and this is a wine that Alex sent me in uh, 2005, a great vintage. And someone was just telling me how they were opening up these 2006 California Chardonnays, and they were dead. Conesguard, of all things, and his 2005 Bourgogne Chardonnay, the simplest wine Alex makes, still very much alive. Hey, we've got it on sale here for 22 bucks. Check it out. That's what I had to drink at our Alex Gambal tasting. I'm your host, Andrew Lampassoni, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying remember, always drink the good stuff first.